Hey guys, welcome to another DaVinci Resolve 19 editing tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a realistic looking blurry background effect, a defocused effect, um, get realistic looking bokeh or bokeh, uh, depends how you want to pronounce it. There's a bit of an argument going on in how you pronounce it. But um, yeah, you just get some really nice looking out of focus elements as if you shot at a really low aperture of like a 1.8 or a 2.0. Um, this effect can look really cool and you can create some really realistic looking result. So I'm gonna be showing you two different ways on how to do it inside of DaVinci Resolve 19. Now, the first way I'm going to show you is going to be the new quick and easier way to do it. And then I'm going to show you another way which will give you slightly more of a realistic looking look. I've um, shot this on a camera where there is no background blur. It kind of looks like everything is in focus. Now that's okay. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but maybe yourself or your client is like, where's, where, where's the depth of field? So um, we're just going to add that for you. Both of these methods I'm going to show you will be in the color tab. Um, one of them is solely the color tab. So the first one I'm going to show you is the new one inside of DaVinci Resolve 19. So let's just go to the color tab and then um, let's just scroll out here. And I'm going to go into the search bar. Make sure you got your effects checked if you're not seeing this. I'm gonna type in defocus. Yep, so defocus, we're just going to drag and drop. And as you can see, nothing's happened. I've you know put it into a node and nothing is happening. Even when I adjust the blur, nothing is happening. So let's just reset that. So the reason why nothing is happening is because this defocus background works with masks. So we're going to create a mask in the exact same node. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go down to magic mask. Now I've made heaps of tutorials on how to use magic mask. So if you want to go a bit more in depth and click this link here, I'm just going to go over here, make sure I've got the plus icon going, uh, make sure I can see this eyedropper tool and I might scrub forward a little bit and I am just going to click and drag and I'm just going to go over the person here and watch as soon as I let go of this button, what's going to happen. Now, as soon as I let go, it automatically creates a blurry background. So that's really neat. And the defocus background worked immediately. And let's see the mask. So the mask did, did an okay job. Um, it kind of stuffs up around the hat. Uh, so I can fix that. I can just hold Alt. And then if you can see me switch over to the minus tool. So let's just click and drag over there. So it goes red, uh, maybe not. Yep, so I'm happy with how it looks. Of course, you can go in and do a better job, but uh, for the sake of this video, this is looking good. So now let's just track it. So tracking forwards and backwards. And that's basically it. So now you've got a defocused background. And of course, you can add a mask for the table, but I just wanted to focus on me. So now let's just go over to defocus background. So let's just adjust some more parameters. I'm gonna zoom in again so we can see what's happening, especially in the trees here. So I can adjust the blur, makes it more intense or not. I can also animate it as well if I wanna create a defocus hunting effect. When it comes to blurring out a background, less is more. So we don't want it to be too blurry just because it looks unnatural and unrealistic, almost like an effect was applied to it. So you can go down to saturation and of course you make you can make the backgrounds you know black and white if you wanted to as well or you can colorize so if you want to get creative with it you can as well but honestly i just want to create a blurry background so i don't need to do that go down to advanced options and for blur type there's two different types there's lens and gaussian gaussian blur so it's using either gaussian blur or lens blur but when you do lens blur, it makes it look realistic, the bokeh. So as you can see in the background, you've got these nice bokeh balls essentially. So it mimics the elements of a lens as if it was defocused in a lens. So you get more of a realistic blur from that. And then down from there, you've got your anamorphism, which if you've used an anamorphic lens, you'd notice that you get these stretched out bokeh balls. So you can mimic as if you shot on a 
anamorphic lens so you can get that sort of stretched out sort of look. Honestly, I'd probably just leave highlights, you know, as it is. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much the defocus background effect. This is actually a new one inside of DaVinci Resolve 19. It's just a quick way to make a blurry background. So um, as you can see, when I zoom out, um, it doesn't affect the table. And when it comes to creating a depth, it kind of gradually fades out into the background. So, you know, you've got your foreground elements and you've got your background elements and then you have things in between. Um, so we want to recreate that. Doing this first method won't do that. You're only just creating a mask around an object, a person, whatever it is you want to be in focus. So now if we want to create more of a realistic looking effect, I'll show you another way. So let's just reset this node. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two nodes. So this first node, I am going to add a depth map. So as you can see, when I've added the depth map, you can see that it's whatever's white is the foreground and then slowly the background becomes black. So you've got different parts of the image being gray. Um, so we can go in there and adjust that so we can adjust the file limit so we can create a bit more of a blurrier background and then we can adjust the near limit so we can have more things in focus. So I basically want myself to be in focus. I don't want any blur to be on me. So I want pretty much the table, even the chair directly behind me to be pretty much solid white. So let's just adjust that. I mean, nothing's happening right now because we haven't created a blur effect. Um, so I'm pretty much happy with this map. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, let's just get out of that. We're going to go down to lens blur your older methods are using pretty much um, radial blur and uh, box blur and Gaussian blur, but lens blur, um, I think that was released in DaVinci Resolve 18. So yeah, when I've added the lens blur effect, the whole image is now blurry. We don't want that. So to fix this, we will just go to depth map preview. It's still blurry. The next thing we're going to do is just click and drag this blue box to the blue arrow. Then now you can see that it's created a bit of a separation, but the only problem is I'm blurry and the background is nice and sharp. We don't want that. We want it to, you know, affect the opposite. So we want to invert it. So we just click invert. And then now the background is blurry compared to me essentially. So now we can go in and adjust a few more things. So let's just zoom in. So we can go down and adjust shape. So you go real apertures, creative, or you can even bring your own sort of template of what the bokeh should look like. You can go to creative and you can have heart shaped ones. So let's just adjust the blur size so we can see it a little bit more. I don't know if it's easy to see. Let me just zoom right in. You can kind of see it here. There's some heart shapes going on. You can change it to starfish. Of course, in this video, we want to make it realistic. So we do real apertures. And I usually like bringing it down to octagon. This method, I actually like it a little bit more than the first method, just because uh, it looks more natural compared to just masking out. So I'm gonna go down to blur size and let's just adjust the blur size. Uh, you can adjust the blade curvature to make it a bit more rounds. You can adjust rotation, anamorphism. So pretty much what we had in the defocus background, in the lens blur, you've got a lot more stuff to play with. So you can still use um, defocus background, the first method, that's totally fine, but this just gives you more options to play with. So yeah, anamorphism, so let's just make it a little bit more anamorphic looking. Let's just add the blur a little bit more. Then you can adjust chroma shift. So if you adjust it to the left, you get a bit more of a uh, orange fringing on the contrast. And then if you bring it over to the right side, you get a bit more of a blue sort of shift. I've noticed this to be quite heavy in like old vintage lenses. So if you're trying to recreate like a vintage look, this will actually help you with that. You can adjust the highlights. I'll just keep it to the standard default size. Then appetization catadioptric. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it does, but you can see what happens to the image when I adjust it. Let's bring the blur all the way up for this. So you can see it here. Um, it's completely up to you. So you can really adjust a lot more parameters with the lens blur effect. Let's just bring the blur size 
pretty much all the way down. I'm actually happy with the blur size. Again, when it comes to creating realistic depth of field, less is more. The less of the blur amount and it's just a bit more subtle, you're not going to really see the imperfections of the image. And um, let's just bring it up for this. So now you can see with the depth map, it's created a bit more of a proper depth of field where you can see the foreground more in focus and then it slowly goes to the back of the image and it gets blurrier and blurrier. So that's basically the two techniques on how to create a blurry background effect inside the DaVinci Resolve 19. Before I get all the comments in the comment section below saying, oh, you should be doing this in camera. And yes, that's true. It, you'll get a much better looking effect getting it in camera. But sometimes, especially with the lens that I shot on here, I shot on the Sony 14 to 24 mil lens. And it's a bit of a weird lens where it doesn't allow you to put any filters on it. So when I'm outdoors, I essentially just have to expose it correctly and um, sacrifice my depth of field essentially. Or if you're shooting on an action camera, action cameras don't really have depth of field. So there's a few reasons to why you won't have any depth of field. So um, I hope this video did help you out and you've learned something new. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to stay notified for my next uploads. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.